It's definitely been a good past week now because I got something very uh, very special to do the collection and it's actually this computer that I got about I don't know how long it's been it's about been about a week maybe a little over a week since I got this this is a Powermax PD1000 and as you may notice it is very similar to the libretto here in fact the Powermax just beats it on thickness and the similarities aren't just in the size they're pretty much even down to the actual design of the computer you've got mouse buttons on the top here you've got like PCMCIA on the side differences though this one supports card bus and on the back it gets very different because on this one you have a ton of stuff on the back you actually have a USB port on here as well you have microphone line in and if headphones not on earphone headphones reset switches on the back as well so yeah and there's a hard disk it just labels it so yeah this one is it has its advantages and disadvantages over the libretto first advantage is of course the specs this one has twice as much ram and has a slightly better processor and actually to do the processor you may notice here this one has a Intel Pentium this one has no stickers let me just open this one has no stickers because it has a Cyrix Media GXM or GXI I can't remember which isn't too good unfortunately a lot some um, recent programs don't actually work on here because they rely rather stupidly on detecting the CPU and if it can't detect it the program crashes and I'm not kidding you that means scum VM doesn't work and neither does Z Doom. so pretty stupid idea of making a program not work just because it can't show you a little bit of information about your own computer to know why they didn't just make it so it just ignores it but oh well it's a little bit of a problem but it's still faster quite a lot faster than this and I've of course upgraded the hard drive with a 20 gigabyte because the original one crashed and 20 gigabyte I was just gonna put a 10 in here but it ended up strangely being exactly the same price as a 20 gig so I thought might as well get an extra 10 gigabytes for the same price like I said, it has double the RAM, so it has 64 megabytes. Both have EDO, but this one uses generic EDO RAM, not specific designed ones to fit in the machine. Opens up the same way. You've got this trim here that opens up, and then you get to the RAM. Main differences, well, two main differences. There is actually, I don't know if you can tell here, but these two things look like speakers. This one is a speaker, this is a mono speaker. There's one over here, but this is actually an internal microphone, so yes, you can use this as a microphone recording computer, which is pretty unique, I must say. Strange for something this small to have that feature, and I mean, it's just libretto has that to control the mouse. This doesn't, this has, you may have noticed earlier, there was a pen on it, it has a touch screen, so. That's pretty cool, though the problems with that come with, of course, games that utilise the mouse in DOS, like Doom, Quake, Theme Hospital, don't work too well on touchscreens, I don't think, I haven't really tried them, but it's a little bit of an issue, however, you can still plug in a mouse, so that avoids that, but defeats the purpose. Anyway. This isn't just this machine that I've got, I mean, in terms of computers, yes, this is the most recent. I got a whole bag full of stuff with it in here. So, this is quite cool, this actually only cost me about £40, and I got this whole bag included with stuff. First one is a 
backup disk of what was originally on there, I'm not going to back that up because it obviously is going to contain personal data some random driver disk I figured doesn't actually contain any drivers for this a brand new copy of Windows NT8 pretty much and a driver CD that was given to me from the guy as well so it saves me having to look it up he also gave me a little extra but I'm not going to use it a fax modem so if you if I really wanted to plug in a fax card for whatever reason I can do so but uh, I didn't really feel like it and here I might have to do a little bit of editing to get this out they're out now this is a docking station for this thing and I did forget to say docking station port is on the opposite side to the libretto it's on this side and it uses the exact same connector reason it's on the opposite side is of course you don't want to be able to plug this in and possibly screw it up so that avoids that and you've also got this chunk here containing PS2 mouse and keyboard so you can't plug in so that's unique it's different to the libretto, libretto doesn't have PS2 ports on the port replicator you also have some CD-ROM ID connection but I don't have any CD one that actually connects using that. Uh, there's also an extended battery in here. Although, what's the point? It holds exactly the same charge as the one in here, which is about two minutes. <coughs> Might have to replace the cells inside it somehow. I'm going to flip this round here. A little bit heavy. In this pocket, you've got some manuals. I think that's all of them. Yep. This one tells you about some stuff it actually has, how it suspends the disc and stuff, hibernation, which doesn't really have, but I guess that's nice. This one's just talking about the docking station it comes with, how to install printers. Um, just a tiny manual telling you how to plug in and if you have this docking station turn the power max off first uh, before plugging it in it's a pro tip this is the main manual it contains there's a Brian on it from the previous owner those websites are on web.archive.org so you can have a little bit of fun if you really want to yeah it just tells you stuff about it how to turn on infrared, how to turn on USB because they're not turned on straight away you have to fiddle around with them in the BIOS to get them to work which I've already done so it saves you the trouble of having to watch me fiddle around with them on video trying to get them to work here is two more stuff that came in here first is a floppy disk that I've got unfortunately a Windows 98 boot disk stuck in because I don't know how to eject it comes with this what I think is a 25 pin serial and I have nothing that connects to that so it's rather strange that he included it because it doesn't work on a Power Max don't know why but I guess it's just a freebie here is another connector this is actually for a CD-ROM drive made by LG and I assume you can um, use this separately because it comes with stuff here and also comes with an AC in port so you can plug this into the wall and I think you can use it separately that's pretty cool actually but obviously I'm not going to use it since I don't feel like carrying around a massive CD player just to play some CDs Finally, because the only other thing in there is the uh, AC adapter for that thing, is the main docking station, which is, as far as I can tell, really uncommon to find any information on, or any pictures on for that matter. This is a true docking station, not a uh, enhanced port replicator like the libretto had. This has a floppy drive on it and a CD-ROM drive, so it has drives that makes it a drop-in station uh, 
PS2 ports again. In the back you have Oh, actually, in that floppy drive, that might be a parallel connection. Yep, that does look like a parallel connection to me. Yeah, that's printer parallel, VGA, and serial. Nothing else except an odd way to actually get this to work is you have to plug in the charger into here, and then plug this into the main charger port on the Palmax itself. And this is the only thing that has Palmax branding on it. You see it there. The only one that has power max branding, literally. There are so many different rebadges of this thing, it's not even funny. But if you want to look up any information, you have to call it a power max. Because this one says personal computer science on it, and they don't have anything on their side referring to this machine, so there you go. And there isn't even any stickers on it at all. And there never was, because my friend has the exact same computer and his doesn't either. Now I'm going to tidy all this up and hopefully turn it on. When I said, when I said tidy up, what I really meant was move everything out of the way so I could uh, get this in the centre. So, um, may need to do a little jump cut to get to the power. Had to get back here fast because it turns on instantly for whatever reason as soon as you put the power on. So there you go. Booting up, it has regular award bios, which is weird. Usually don't have that on um, laptops, but yeah. Let me see. Yeah, there you go. It was um problem with this is the screen has an issue where if you have the brightness fully up, the screen will start getting lines going down it, which is a shame, but it's not my fault. And to be honest. On low brightness, it looks just fine to me. Uh, boot Windows. I put everything on here because, of course, it's a 20 gigabyte hard drive. Now, this is a pretty much recent install of Windows. It's got barely anything on it. Now, I was trying to get Asterix Mega Madness to work on this, but it didn't work. It needs DirectX 8 which doesn't support this because this has, as I said before, a Cyrix Media GX so it doesn't work. You can only get the DirectX 7. Now, if I can swap over, there you go, use this with my right hand, I'll show you drawing on this thing because, believe it or not, this has a very good touch screen. It's hard to actually Look at this thing through the camera's finder because this is such a small camera. Let me just draw something. Um, I'll draw a stick figure. I'm not very good at uh, drawing through the camera. And I used a pencil. The uh, air, you can see it draws kind of good, I'm just shaky because I'm drawing through a camera and trying to draw as best I can, it's not working. So, just show you the specs, it will run WinRep. Um, yeah, that's what I use to get all the stuff off here. Now the problem is I can't tell you the CPU speed straight off this because WinRep doesn't find it but I don't know if you paid attention to the bio screen but it did say so you go collected information and it will tell you everything so we have you can see down here it says 62 megabytes of RAM even though it's 64 it's just using 2.5 megabytes for the video just to sign that um, you can see hard drive space not very well of course because this is a camera pick and a tiny 6.1 inch screen double clicking works on this touch screen unlike the tablet so there you go Palmax 98 you can see it now hopefully 18.6 gigabytes formatted it won't let me format anymore but that's just something computers do I'm not totally sure why it does that but there's probably a good reason. Go into control panel here. 
The MIDI device isn't too good on this thing. If I could scroll down. Damn viewfinder. Yeah, the MIDI device is too good, but that's probably you pay for such an obscure computer using the random mass uh, processor. Don't know if you can read it. it says Sarix instead Media GX. So, and I had to go through a process of pain trying to install Windows 98 Second Edition on it because getting all the drivers on there, even though it's on the CD. It's still quite annoying to get the stuff to work. There's an annoying process that I can't really describe to you in order to get the display to work. I'll probably write down the guide if anyone really wants it. Show files. Alright. Now, it's folder if I remember. Oh no. It's organised itself this time. Last 500 times I went in the Windows folder, media was right down the bottom. So don't know how this good this is going to be, but Barks Brandenburg could say number three. Don't know how good or how loud it's going to be. Admittedly, that's actually a good, um... MIDI file. That sounds pretty good on here. Canyon does not. I'm not playing Canyon. It just doesn't sound too good. Because it only plays the right channel for whatever reason. Don't know what that's about. Now if anyone really wants the drivers without uh, me using the CD to give them to you if anyone wants it, I'll put them all in the zip file but go on device manager. Now always comes up with a little thing here about internet connection sharing but I don't care about that um... first we'll go display adapters Cyrix Express Graphics so that's what it uses for display now uh, you have to faff around to get that to work the sound is alright, sounds easy to get working it's an express audio or if you actually manage to get Windows 2000 working on here with the touch screen the sound is the only issue you'll have and you have to use a Sound Blaster 16 WDM driver. I tried installing Windows 2000 on it, I got everything to work except the uh, touchscreen which is a shame. Yeah, that's a Powermax PD-1000 for you. It's actually got a pretty good keyboard I must say, I forgot to mention that. So. That's from 1998, I might do videos of it soon, and I may do an update video on the libretto. So that's all for now, hopefully more videos coming soon, bye.